Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. We have what I'm going to call a hidden hinge mini album. And we are using the Alice in Wonderland paper from Graphic 45. Oh, sorry. It's called Alice's Tea Party. Um, but it is basically Alice in Wonderland. So we are making this hidden hinge album. This is without any of the decoration. So that decorating part is going to come in part two. But for this video, we're going to go through how to create the base. So front cover, back cover, and this is what my sneak peek is going to give you. So we have these parts, which we will learn that um, this is where actually the, the hinge is. So we've covered it with some more beautiful designer paper, but this is essentially what the book looks like. So can't wait to get started with the measurements and the how-to. So let's get to it. Started. We're gonna start with the measurements. So I'm using, instead of chipboard, I'm just using some regular cardboard. And um, for the album, you could always use chipboard because we're actually gonna be gluing two of these pieces together. So chipboard would actually work. You can also use um, the cover of a cereal box. Cereal boxes are an excellent uh, idea for this. So if so long as you can get four pieces that are measuring four and a quarter by six and a quarter, you're good. If you were using chipboard, you only need two pieces. We're just doing a front and back cover. That's all we're doing with those. So that is what you need for that. We are using, I uh, failed to mention actually, that we are using the um, Alice's Tea Party from uh, Graphic 45. I'm madly looking for the cover page. That's it. So we've used this before in other videos um, for cards and things like that. So I thought it would be a super fun collection to use. We are using the 12 by 12 today. And so, yeah. So um, to cover, we're going to be using the uh, blue check. It is the opposite side, the B side to the uh, title page. So um, for this, you're going to need two pieces and these need to both be cut at five and one quarter by seven and one quarter, two. We are using this beautiful floral on the back side has this plaid and we'll be using these to make our hinge. So you need three pieces, all measuring 12 by four. So you'll be able to get that out of one sheet of paper. And then for my pages, pages you're going to need eight pieces and these are all measured at eight by six so you're going to be able to get two out of each 12 by 12 sheet so i've chosen four different um patterns to go with so we've got the blue um tea party one we've got the blue the time for tea with the um teacups saucers and and teapot we have this one with the queen and um, the Mad Hatter. So uh, I've got two of those and then two of uh, these ones. So that makes for eight. And then the very last piece that we need to cut today is uh, also eight pieces. And I've chosen two different designs for this. And these are going to be six by five. So we have some scoring to do. I'm going to set aside these two for now and we'll get our scoring done. So I'm just going to move my mat to the side. We're going to start with our hinge pieces. And while it may not seem, I mean, it seems kind of unusual. Actually, I'm going to measure that. Um, it seems kind of unusual that I'm using something like this which is kind of going to get, it is going to get covered. Like, don't get me wrong. It, so if you feel like you're not going to be, you know, but <clears throat> you're going to see parts of it on the front, on the back, um, and at the side, um, as I showed you right, right at the beginning. 
So I'm just going to do one quick little thing and that is double checking because it doesn't fit in here quite right, which usually means it's a little bit bigger than 12. And I just want to be absolutely certain that I'm being as precise as possible. Some companies are very generous with their paper sizes. So I like to be 100% sure. And even though it's just a little tiny bit, it's still a bit. So, <clears throat> and when you're scoring, especially, I just like to be, like I said, 100% sure that I'm scoring each of these the same way. Okay, take out the scoring. The score pal again, get rid of those. Okay, and now the scoring for these is very, very simple. So we are just gonna be scoring across the 12 inch and we're gonna be scoring at every one and a half inch. So we're gonna start at one and a half, whoops, one and a half, then three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. And we're going to repeat that the same thing for the last two pieces. Okay, so now that our three pieces are done for the hinge, I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to bring in our pages. So these are the ones that are eight by six. So at the eight inch, and you'll notice that all of these are like they're all directional. So I've made sure that my pages are all gonna lay this this way. So you do want the eight across uh, eight inches across the width and five and six across the height. And we're just gonna be scoring these in half. You could easily just fold the pages in half if you'd like and fold them like that because it's just gonna be in half making it super, super simple. I am gonna run through though and score these all at four. So now that I've got all my pages scored, <clears throat> excuse me, the last one is these pieces that are six by five. These are also gonna be scored in half. So like with the pages, if you didn't want to score them, you could certainly just fold them in half at the three or fold them in half. Or if you're scoring, you're just going to score at three inches. Okay, now that all the scoring is done, I'm just going to put my score mat there and I'm going to go run through quickly folding and burnishing all of my score marks. Okay, so now that we have all of our pages and all of these parts are gonna be pages as well. These were the six by five and six by five. So these are scored now at three. And um, those are gonna be kind of like pages. They're like mini pages, they hide the hinges. Um, and secure the larger pages in place. So we now need to get to uh, folding and burnishing our score marks for the hinges. So the only thing that you really wanna be very careful of is as you go down the line and hit your score marks, just try to be mindful that you wanna keep these as close to level on this side and well now on this side <laughs> so that you have a nice um, kind of like handmade book binding edge because one of the edges are actually going to be on the outside so you're going to you're going to be seeing that so um, I'm just making a note of that because I wasn't as careful when I was making my original, my little, um, you know, my first go at it. Um, and they were kind of a little bit all over the place. So it didn't make for a really nice finished 
edge on the outside. So just make sure that you are being mindful and just kind of manipulating the paper as you go and making sure that they do stay as lined up as you possibly can get them. So you're going to continue on folding all of your score marks for all three of these pages. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we have our three pieces, um, you're just going to want to make sure that you've got two that are like this. I'm going to show it to you like this. So mountain, mountain, and then you're going to have one that starts with a valley. And the reason behind that is you're going to connect all three like this. So this mountain is going to connect to that valley. This mountain is going to connect to that valley. So how we're going to do that is I'm just going to take, I'm going to set that piece aside. Bear with me one second. I'm just going to get my glue. You can do this with double-sided um, tape. You can run a piece of score tape. Uh, down the middle or around the sides, whatever you desire. So I'm just going to run some glue all the way around. I'm going to do a little line in the middle. And we are going to place our mountain piece on top making sure sorry i'm just making sure that my ah oh, you know what sorry i'm gonna do the other piece because i had one piece upside down and you definitely although it's not really not going to be noticeable you kind of don't want that so i'm making sure that everything is aligned properly and that my fold folds will happen um, without anything impeding them. So I've got my pieces here. I'm just going to use my bone folder to make sure everything is adhered properly. If you have a brayer, you can use one of those, but I like using the bone folder. Okay. So we've got our extended piece and this is what it looks like so far. And now we're going to connect Again, making sure that I've got everything going in the same direction. <laughs> I'm looking for one specific bud. Making sure that it goes, because it is kind of a bit challenging to figure out what's what. Okay, so again, I'm going to put my glue on this valley piece. doesn't require gobs and gobs of glue either, at least not with the, um, using art glitter glue and you really don't need a lot. A little, a little bit goes a long way. And I just feel like that moved. Oh, that did move. Okay, get that back in there. I didn't quite get it back in place. So I'm going to peel that off and have another go at it because the hinge kind of is what holds all those pieces together. So 
to me if I've got one piece that's sticking up, the whole the page is not gonna kind of lay properly. So like I said, I want to get close to that score mark without impeding it, making sure that it's all lined up properly. Okay. Much better. Okay. Perfect. Oops. Glue that came out on that side. Okay, so now we have this super long, <laughs> very um, interesting hinge. So we have a little bit more work to do to create the hinge. And so now is where you would decide really kind of which one you want on the inside. So I'm going to, I've always wanted to do this lovely plaid on the inside. Um, like I said, it's not like it's going to be seen a whole lot. Your blue is really what's going to show. This is going to show on the outside of your cover. So if you wanted the plaid on the outside, you would just go back and kind of change how these are being folded. And then you'll have the plaid on the outside. I think I'm going to do the blue, this little blue floral is going to be on the outside for mine. So <clears throat> now we're going to go through and we need to, since this is how I'm going to be, mine is going to be, I need to glue together each one of these pieces. So all of my mountains are going to get glued together. So for example, I'm going to take these two sections and glue them together. So applying my glue. Again, you can do this with score tape if you wish. Don't need to have it on both sides because it's going to glue together. So I put my glue on one side and just press together because these are nicely folded already. Then you can come back with your brayer or your bone folder and get that nicely stuck together. You also want to make sure you wipe clean the edges so that you don't have any bits that are coming out. So I'm going to continue on gluing together my mountains and then I will be right back. Okay, <clears throat> so you should have a little hinge mechanism that looks like this. So we have two single flaps on either side, and then we're going to have 10 flaps on the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So these two flaps are going to be on the outside and the first two hinges are going to be what connects the inside. And that's what we're going to get to next. So I'm going to, actually I'm going to leave my, my score mat there because it's a nice surface to work on, especially when I'm handling this glue. So again, you can use some double-sided score tape um, or just like double-sided tape. Um, score tape just happens to be the brand that I normally use because we have it in the store. <laughs> um, so I am going to double up on my cardboard pieces. And I think this really just happens to be a little bit thicker 
of cardstock. Whoops, got some spillage there. Just make sure that you're happy with the alignment. Oh, it needs to be over a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna just take my bone folder and you ha if you happen to have a brayer, just go over it um, to make sure that the glue kind of spreads out. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my next two pieces. Like I said, if you would like to use chipboard, you're more than, whoops, more than um, welcome to. I just wanted to do this. Um, not everybody likes using chipboard or wants to use chipboard, but there are other ways in which, or other mm, materials that we can use. And I really like the idea of the cereal box. In fact, I went downstairs to look to see if I had a, well, I have cereal box. It just, just would meant, would have meant that the bag of cereal just would have been in the cupboards, which I suppose I could have done, but I chose not to, because this was easy. It was something I have, I have in my stash already. Okay. So now we have our front and back covers. We are going to bring in. Oh, I got some glue there. We are going to bring in our two cover pieces. So I'm going to put the, the, the side that I want on the outside, I'm going to put that face down. I'm going to apply some glue on my cardboard piece. Again, if you'd like to use score tape or double sided tape, by all means. I'm going to flip this over and place it as close to in the middle as possible. I'm going to try and make sure because it's, that uh, doesn't matter if it's off a little bit, it's off a little bit, but I'm going to, again, use my bone folder. I'm going to go around the edges now and the corners is what I'm going to be cutting off. I'm going to be cutting off the corners just to eliminate some of the bulk and you're wanting to stay about an eighth of an inch away from the corner of your um, cardboard. So I'm just going to go around. The angle isn't quite as important. Just try to keep it. Uh, an eighth, if you err on the side of caution and cut a little bit more than an eighth, then that is fine as well. Um, you'll just have to do a little bit of tucking, which is basically what I always have to do anyways. So I'm just running my bone folder right along where the cardboard is. And this is going to make it easier for the paper to bend over. I'm just going to kind of massage the paper. If you haven't made an album or a folio ever, these are the same steps that you follow basically for everything. And I feel like this is a really kind of nice, easy, um, kind of beginner album to make. And I, I absolutely love this paper. So <laughs> it's kind of a, a dual thing for me. <laughs> So I'm going to go around, I'm going to go side by side. So I'm going to start off with this side. So I run a bead of glue right next to the cardboard. I'm going to come up across the top and then down and I'm going to just do a little wiggle in the middle. Okay, so because we've already gone around, we've done our scoring, and then we kind of folded it and massaged it a little bit, it's going to be a lot easier to fold. You're going to have some glue possibly that comes seeping out the sides, but that's okay because this is going to be covered by another beautiful designer paper. Okay, so that is side number one. We are going to rotate and do the opposite side. Same way, run a bead of glue along your cardboard, come up, go across the top, 
and then for added measure I do a little squiggly in the middle <laughs> so I'm just gonna massage it down getting glue on my fingers <laughs> glue everywhere <laughs> oh there's a lot of glue there okay give me one second I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper towel so I don't continue making a mess on my fingers okay I'm just gonna come back with my bone folder make sure that that is all clean okay so first two sides are done we are now going to work on our ends so we are going to do the same thing run a bead of glue right along the cardboard piece up across the top down a little squiggly okay so for this part is not not terribly um difficult okay i'm just trying to think how i normally do it okay what you do want to do is there's a little bit that kind of hangs over here so i'm just going to kind of push that in so that your paper is kind of tucking in around so this side is tucking around the chipboard or around your cardboard so hopefully that was something that you were able to see I'm dipping my nails in the glue but that doesn't quite matter and then when you fold it over you get a nice fold on either corner instead of instead of a super sharp point oh my goodness glue the glue today the glue so I'll just show you a quick so that's what your corners look like um, when you end up following that, that, those steps. So we're going to do the exact same thing with our last corner or last side. Oh, before I fold those in. So all I do is I kind of find with my nail the edge of the of the cardboard or chipboard and I just press in. And now I'm going to fold it over. Oh, I didn't get much glue on my hands at all that time. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Come back with my bone folder. Make sure that that is nicely adhered and we have one of our covers done. So you're going to follow the exact same steps for your second cover. Okay, so we have both of our covers done, front and back, and our next, um, our next part is going to be making a bit of a template. And the template is going to be required because we need to do a little slit in each one of the pages so that they slide onto the hinge. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my, my hinge mechanism. I'm going to reach for there, a lovely shade of orange. <laughs> I think that's big enough. Um, cause it needs to be eight. Oh, that's not going to be big enough. It needs to be eight by 
six. <coughs> Excuse me. So this piece will need to be eight by six. So I'm just gonna cut it real quick. It needs to be the same size as the pages. eight by six. I'm just going to simply fold this in half. Oh boy. Okay. And then we are going to open this up and then on this fold line, I'm going to set just in place um, my hinge. Sorry, I had something in my eye. I'm going to just double check and make sure that my hinge is where I want it to be. So it's going to be an inch from the top and an inch from the bottom. So I'm just trying to center it as much as I possibly can. Of course, it's never going to be 100% perfect. I'm going to take my pen and just on the actual fold for my page, I just made a little line at the top and the bottom. So now I'm going to grab my self-healing mat and my pokey tool. <laughs> um, if you wanted to use, like if you had, you're gonna need something I think a little bit bigger than a pin because on the actual pages itself, what I did find is I needed to have something a little bit bigger than uh, a pin size to be able to make it uh, noticeable at least for my eyes when you have a designer paper when there's a lot going on it can be a little bit challenging in order to see the two uh, holes that you've made so I've just done that I've made two holes where and this is going to be my template so I've got two holes at the top and the bottom where I made the mark and what we are going to do is I'm going to lay that inside my page and you can either hold it I mean it depends on you know how how um, steady you feel like you are if you want to lay it down I'm just going to go ahead mark my two holes hopefully I can see them yeah I'm just gonna make them a little bit bigger I know this piercing tool is very like very wide, I feel like, at the middle or at the end. So here it gets to be a little bit wider. So I'd usually just go about halfway in order, just so long as it's something that I can see. Because what we are going to do is now we're going to come, on, come along with our X-Acto blade or craft knife. And we're going to take a ruler and now we're going to join those two dots. So the two little holes that we just made, I'm just going to run my blade from hole to hole. So now we have a little slit in our paper and that is how our pages are going to get in installed, so to speak. So the hinge actually fits right through and that is part of the installation. So the reason why you're wanting to get it obviously as close to in the middle as possible when you're laying this down and making your template is because these pages, if they're too high or too low, could possibly overextend past or extend past the top and the bottom of your cover. So that is what we're going to continue doing for the rest 
of our pages. So these are the ones that we have folded um, at four. So all of your pages now would be four by six. And so you're gonna do every single sheet like we just did. So we're gonna lay in our template. Get that as even as possible. I'm gonna grab my pick, hole at the top and the bottom. And boy, oh boy, this one, <laughs> this is kind of one of the ones I was talking about. I cannot see this for the life of me. Sometimes it's easier on one side, but I feel it a little bit, but not really. Oh boy. Ah, holding it up to the light helps. There we go. Got one. Got the other. <laughs> Should have known that that, that would work. <clears throat> oh boy, yeah. These, I'm going to have to make these ones a little bit bigger than I would normally because I really can't see them very well. I mean, ultimately, if you have to make them a little bit bigger, then so long as you can see them, and I can see them now, one's right there, the other one's there, that's all that matters. Okay, so continue on doing this for the remaining pages. So you have to do the same thing to all eight pages, <clears throat> and then I'll catch up right, right back. I'll catch up. I'll catch up with you. <laughs> okay, so we have got all of our pages done and cut. And so now we're going to go through the installation of the hinge, the installation of the pages, the installation of these little cute little card thingies that are going to stop the pages from flying out. So we have got uh, a little bit to left to do, but um, yeah, it's gonna look fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna grab our hinge, we're gonna grab our pages now. The, uh, sorry, not the pages, the cover, the front and back cover. And what we are gonna do is we are going to this flap, which is a, just a single page, is going to go on the outside and then the back single page is also going to go on the outside. So this is kind of, I don't know if I can hold all this together in my hands. It's going to kind of look something like this when we're done. And then we're going to, for added kind of stabilization, we're going to also glue this first hinge is going to get glued on the inside. Okay, so first things first, we are going to glue on the outside. And again, I don't know if that's upside down or I feel like that's the right side. So long as it looks okay, I guess. Let me just see. I'm referencing the larger sheets. I don't think I've cut that sheet yet. Okay. Okay, so it goes like that. Okay, perfect, I did have it right. Anyhow, so <laughs> just because these look like they should possibly be going upwards, but they're actually are facing downwards. So anyways, that's fine. We're gonna apply <laughs> some glue to the inside. Ah, uh, this is all, it took me a while to cut the pages, so I just gotta use my pin again to, you know, get the glue flowing. Okay. So we glue on the inside flap. Once again, if you would like to use double-sided tape, score tape, what have you, you're more than welcome to. I'm just doing my best to get this as close to in the middle as I possibly can. 
like I knew I threw, um, tossed to the side my, I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to close this piece down. Okay. Make sure that that is secure and grab my bone folder. Get that all spread out. Okay, so that is the front done. We repeat and do the exact same things for the back. So the single flap, I'm going to apply my glue around the outside, squiggle down the middle. <laughs> and now I am really making sure that the front and the back are all aligned like the covers are aligned as much as possible. Okay. And then we are going to just run our bone folder across that. So this is what it looks like right now. We're going to take our glue again, whatever adhesive you're choosing to work with. apply some glue and simply fold that over. I'm just going to grab my bone folder quickly. Make sure that that is not good and secure and then repeat with the other side. Applying the glue. Perfect. Okay, so the hinge is in. Yay! <laughs> You're getting ever so close. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm just going to run through these pages and sort them out. Um, I did, you know, create a bit of a pattern in the sense that I've got four pink and four blue. <laughs> so it's just a matter of kind of, you know, choosing which ones go where. So if I do that, then that. Making sure that they're all the going the right direction and we're just slim sip oh, <laughs> easy for somebody else to say obviously we're just simply going to slip this on the hinge so there's one hinge per page so now we've got eight pages left I believe six yep yeah, seven eight so we're going to slide it over top. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the sense that the the lines, at least how when I was using the X-Acto blade, are a little bit longer. So I'm just moving it up and you can adjust it. See, it, it kind of moves up and down. So I'm just going to make sure that they are you know, that there's room for them to move and that um, they will ultimately sit in the right spot. Like I said, not too far down, not too far up. They're going to sit all nice and level. Well, as level as you can get them. And the nice thing about using this double-sided paper is you've got beautiful paper on both sides. It's just going to look fantastic. I can't wait to finish this album. Okay. So the easiest thing, and I've tried a couple of different methods, is kind of opening the page like so 
you kind of spread apart by pull by pulling a little bit you spread apart the uh, slit that we cut with the exacto blade and then it slides on the the um, hinge quite easily and so we have all of our pages just going to make sure that they are you know as you go through and um, put these little little guys in then is when I kind of make sure that I'm paying particular attention to the spacing and where things are positioned so that I'm getting as you know close to in the middle as possible but it's such a cute little book. I love it. Love it. Okay. So these, these are the, um, six by five that we cut. So six by five, once we folded them in half, then they become uh, three by five. And these are basically going to go on the hinge. So this is what prevents the page from slipping out because we've got, um, it's larger or it's sorry, it's longer than the length of the hinge and the length of the slit that we cut. So those will fit nicely in there and prevent the pages from going anywhere. So we're going to go through these. I definitely would recommend gluing both sides or applying your um, adhesive, whichever kind of adhesive it is that you're using on both sides. And then when we go to apply it, I like sneaking it kind of in again, trying to get it as evenly spaced as possible. We are going to have to leave a little bit of room so that obviously, so the pages can kind of flip back and forth. So I definitely want to make sure that that happens before you glue. Um, and so, okay. I just had to make sure that I had started recording. <laughs> had a moment, moment, <laughs> had a moment. Um, you know what, I'm not going to be able to kind of go over it with my bone folder lest I, you know, start bending things that I don't want to be bent. So that is what we're going to be doing next. So with mine, I've used two different um, paper uh, designs. And so that one, I used the uh, suits, the card suits. This one is going to be the hearts and I'm just going to go back and forth and alternate between each. And so again, like I did on the first one, apply our glue. Whoa, <laughs> thankfully. So I'm just going to sneak that in. And again, make sure it moves without too much trouble and then press it down. Making sure that you've got any glue that kind of comes out, make sure that you kind of get that cleaned up because it can, uh, you know, start sticking the pages together. <laughs> I say from personal experience. So, okay. So you're going to keep on doing this. I'll, I'm, you know, I'm going to alternate, uh, back and forth between the two different, um, little page or hinge covers. I guess that's what I'm going to call these guys. Um, and I will continue as soon as I'm done. Okay, so now that you have all of your pages and all of the hinge kind of covers all installed, whoops, almost got pages stuck there. 
Um, we're going to do the inside. We're going to cut pieces for the inside. I just decided that because this piece that was left over from my front piece, I had a strip that was probably four and a bit. So I cut these down. You need two that are four by six and those will lay nicely inside. And they're going, I figured they're going to be decorated anyways. There was no sense in kind of cutting into some more designer paper if I didn't need to. So, um, you can obviously decide for yourself if you'd like. <laughs> That's not what you'd like to do then by all means. I, you do have to lift up the book though in order to you kind of really press down and get the uh, kind of corners and sides. Make sure that those are all pressed down nicely and I'm just going to duplicate that and get this press down or get this adhered installed on the back side. Okay. There we go. So that is the um, Hidden Hinge album. So this is the beginning. Obviously there are still a little bit more um, design work to be done, which I will walk you through um, in part two. Hopefully you have found this tutorial useful and helpful in any way, shape or form. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. I do answer absolutely every single one of them. If you have not yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. We are working our way to 500 followers or subscribers. And as soon as we hit that total, then we are going to have a fabulous giveaway. So you don't want to miss that. Um, please hit the bell if you are looking forward to our future videos and I can assure you there will be future videos. Um, and, uh, I think that's it for now. So I look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully you have had a fabulous time and that you continue having a fabulous day. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe. Stay well. Bye.